I know this looks like the beginning of a very bad horror movie. And yes, it could be. Let me introduce you to the Eastern Lava Grasshopper, Romelia Mycoptera. Hi, I'm Elise. I'm glad you stopped by. If you're new to gardening, if you've just moved into an area that has this grasshopper, or if the grasshopper has just invaded your area, you might find this video interesting. So, Eastern Lobber Grasshopper. In Old English, lobber means slow and clumsy, but these are not slow and clumsy grasshoppers. So, really bad name for them. Some of the other common names are primarily names with the word devil in it. Black Devil, Black Diablo, Horse's Head, uh, Destructive Devil, Giant Locust, and many other names. Now, they are not a locust. There are other grasshoppers in the same family all across the world. But in the southeast, this is the largest, most destructive, most distinctive grasshopper. It does millions and millions of dollars of damage each year to the commercial industries and to residential landscapes. Now this is a female. The females are the largest. They can get three to three and a half inches in length and big around in girth. This is a male. He will be shorter and slimmer. Sometimes three quarters of the length of the female. Now, they do not bite, they do not sting, they do not fly. They do have wings, and underneath their wings is bright red. That's part of their defense mechanisms. They are toxic, so you don't ever want to eat this grasshopper. Let's talk about their life cycle. And we're going to start with the female mating in her last adult instar stage, she lays eggs in the ground, underneath the soil, underneath leaf litter, mulch, plants, things like that. An adult female can lay up to 400 eggs a season. They reproduce exponentially. The eggs over winter they hatch out in early spring when it starts getting warm, con you know, concerning where you're at. For us in Zone 9B, they can hatch out as early as the end of February. And so you really have to be diligent about coming out and looking for them. The easiest thing to do is to take a stick or your shoe or whatever and just lightly scuff around in the mulch or the leaf litter. Then go off and come back in about five minutes. If there's any that has hatched out, what they're going to do is start climbing or start moving. And I have seen them hatch out in such quantities underneath leaf litter, it looked like the ground was moving. They can climb up on the small bush and completely cover that small bush and you'll have nothing but black grasshoppers. So, from the egg stage, they hatch out into the nymph stage. The little black nymph has a yellow, a red, or an orange stripe. It could be an inch or so, one way or the other. They go through four to five inch stars in their life, each time shedding their skeleton, growing a little bigger. In our area, they stay black until the final inch star, then they'll turn this really bright color. A color is one of their defense mechanisms. You really want to try to get them as young as possible. And there are some places where they stay black even into the adult final instar stage. Once they get to the final stage, they will start mating. And the female will start laying. And like I said, up to 400 eggs a season. That's a lot. So for every female that you don't catch in time, she can lay up to 400 eggs. They don't bite, they don't sting, they don't fly. Their wings are too small for them to fly. You can't eat them, they are toxic. They'll make small animals sick. Reptiles, amphibians, mammals, doesn't matter. They can make small animals sick. 
so you never ever want to eat them. You can handle them, not a problem. I have gloves on because their feet have a little barb section on the end. And it's not that it's going to scratch your skin enough to break the skin. I just don't like that feeling. So when I go out, I put on gloves and I put on shoes. And if I see them, I'll grab them off and dispatch them. When they are in the young black nymph stage, you can use just common household sprays to get rid of them. But just remember that spray is going to kill everything. Your good insects, everything. As they get older and go through their final instars, you have to use stronger and stronger sprays, bug killers, and the stuff is so strong at that point, it can kill your plant, it can even kill birds. Manual removal, blunt force trauma. That's what you have to do with the grasshoppers. All right, they can affect their instars based on the population and the food supply. So sometimes it's four instars, five instars, or six instars. So they can actually have a little influence on that. What do they eat? Practically anything they wish. They do have favorites. For us, it's anything in the Amaryllidaceae family. Crinums, Amaryllis, things like that. They like anything that is soft. But they will eat anything. They've even been found in sewer lines just eating the grass that floats in on the sewer line. They're very fond of vegetable gardens, citrus trees, crepe myrtles. I've seen them on my staghorn ferns. They eat over 100 varieties of plants out of 36 or 38 plant families. So that's a lot. All right. Range. The eastern lava grasshopper starts up in the southern Virginia, comes all the way down across the bottom of the United States into the Gulf states and over into Texas. There are other species all across the planet though. Three to three and a half inches long, very distinct color, very, very voracious eaters. Millions of dollars worth of damage. Big range, lots of food, and four, five, six instars. Okay, defense mechanisms. Actually, they have quite a few defense mechanisms. As soon as they hatch out, they're born with the ability to crawl, the instinct to crawl, to get away from predators. And I have seen adults or grasshoppers in their later instar stage crawling up the side of two-story buildings. So they crawl very well. They jump. Even though they don't fly, they're excellent jumpers. And if you've ever tried to track one down across your yard, you feel like a fool trying to catch this grasshopper that is actually jumping away from you. They hide. If they see you coming, if they feel the predator is coming, they can crawl around to the back of the leaf and hide. They freeze. They'll just freeze in place. They hiss. They make hissing noises to scare predators off. They spit. And they'll spit this black, disgusting gunk. Really, really stinks. The old timers used to call it backy juice. It's not poison. If it hits you, it's not going to make you sick. It's just so disgusting. <laughs> it's digested proteins. So, they jump, they crawl, they hide, they freeze. Actually, they're kind of intelligent. <laughs> they stink really, really bad. They hiss, they spit. Okay. And of course, then their sheer numbers is a defense mechanism. But their biggest defense mechanism is all this pretty bright coloration, a posomatic. And there are lots of creatures in the insect world, in the animal kingdom, that uses this bright coloration. And what it does, it tells would-be predators, hey, don't eat me, I taste bad, I'm poison, I can make you sick. So, 
I know there are some places where they eat grasshoppers, but don't ever try eating one of these. It's not worth the sickness that you would go through. I'm going to put her back in the jar and we're going to walk around just a moment and I want to show you some of the damage that they can do. Because we always have the folks saying, oh no, I can't kill them, I can't kill them. Now there's a couple in here too. Here's another big female and here's another male. And I'll put these back in here when I'm through. Ways to dispatch them. Manual removal, put your gloves on, go out and grab them off. If they don't bother you, just grab them off with your hands. And then dispatch them however is the easiest for you. Your boot, a stick, a baseball bat. All right, let's look at some of the damage. Now this is a big old crinum. Yes, it's not going to kill this crinum. Look at that damage though. Younger plants, they can kill. And they'll just eat and eat and eat. Not only do they eat the leaf, they'll eat the stem. All this is where they have chewed on the stem. And they can chew enough to eventually break that stem down and you lose your flower head. They eat flowers. It's not unusual to come out and see the young flower heads destroyed. Let's walk down here and look at another crinum. So they'll eat the leaves and not just around the edges. They'll eat holes out of the leaves. And look at these young crinums. Now they are coming back out. But even one this size, they can absolutely destroy. Look at that leaf. Look at all this damage. Now that's more than just eating a little bit around the edge. So, Look here, where they've been chewing on the back of the leaf. All right, big plants like this, it doesn't kill, but they can kill your young plants. And one of the reasons why, if they find a plant they like, they'll come out and eat it down. They can eat it down to the ground in one night because they feed at night a lot. They feed in the daytime too, but they'll feed at night. Then it puts out half an inch, quarter inch of new growth, they come back and they eat it again. So, you lose your plant. Now look at this. They've eaten these seeds. I'm going to have to stake this seed pot up. So there's at least four on here that are no good. I can try to save them in case they didn't eat all the way down into the embryo. But that's the kind of damage they do. If they don't have a favorite food available, they'll eat anything. So, if you don't have something that they really like, but you have this nice, pretty vegetable garden, you could come out the next morning and all your vegetables would be gone. I've had that happen, even though I have plants that they like. I have come out and my vegetable garden was gone, eaten down to the ground. We didn't have these, and I grew up in the southeast when I was a child. I didn't have them until, oh, about 15 years ago. And I remember the first time I saw them, but I didn't know what they were. And then the next few seasons, it was horrible. It was not unusual to find 30 or 40 a day. So I researched them, found out what I needed to do. I didn't want to use chemicals because I'm a natural grower, but I did want to get rid of them. So it was kind of like a, me against the grasshopper. And every year I'm very diligent and every year they get less and less. 
I hope next year I have none or hardly none. <laughs> but they are big. They are colorful and it's a shame because they are pretty. Nowhere on the food chain, nothing eats them. There's one bird that will try to eat them. We don't have that bird. They will not uh, do anything but eat plants. If a bird ate them, if they supplied uh, food for something, it would be different. Okay, getting rid of them, grab them off, knock them off on the ground. When I grab them with my hand, I throw them down extremely hard on the ground to stun them. If I don't stun them, they're going to crawl off. Then I can take a stick or if I have my boot on or whatever and just kill them. If you don't want to do that, you can grab them off, put them in a jar. You can drown them. You can put alcohol in with them. Let Put them out in triple digit heat index, whatever you want to do. Now it is suggested if you put them in a container, don't just throw the container into your yard trash to go to a landfill where the container can be busted open and the grasshoppers escape and continue destroying. So you want to go ahead as hard as it seems and destroy that grasshopper. Very easy. Think about it this way. Do you want to lose your plants that you've worked so hard on? If you're a backyard grower, do you want to lose a source of income? If you're growing a vegetable garden for your family, do you want to lose all that food? I still get queasy when I have to kill them. But it's that or lose my plants. It's that or lose my seeds. It's that or lose my vegetable garden. Think about it. Till we speak again, have a fantastic day.